So one of the main gripes and problems people might have when they're moving from Windows to Linux or Mac to Linux is that Linux doesn't have the Adobe software. And this may be a complete showstopper for most people. That's completely understandable. It might be a huge hassle uh, depending on how invested you are in Adobe software to move to some other software. But there are, you know, options out there that you can use on Linux instead of the Adobe software. So that's what I'm here to talk you about. Uh, so one of the things that we could start with is uh, application called Krita, which is a Photoshop-esque application, which I use uh, a lot of the time whenever I'm doing some small uh, graphical dis design. I mean, I use pretty simple things with Krita, so uh, yeah, if you need to use it for something more advanced, maybe some 3D related tools, maybe Photoshop is better with that, I have no idea. So whenever I need you know, some kind of YouTube thumbnails and things like that. That's uh, easily achievable, of course, with Krita. And it looks very much like Photoshop. Of course, there's a learning curve to everything. Yeah, yeah, the settings are a little bit different, but you can learn it pretty quickly, I'd presume. Another one is GIMP, uh, something that looked quite, a, quite different uh, a couple of versions ago. But nowadays, you know, all these um, elements on the sides are in the same window. They used to be like floating windows, which was a little bit confusing for some users. But now it looks a little bit more like Photoshop. And really, if you learn these tools well, then I think you can achieve anything you want, basically. It's just a matter of getting comfortable with the software. All right, moving on to something to replace Illustrator. Well, Inkscape is one of those. I have it installed here because I need it sometimes for uh, creating vector graphics like ve vector letters to replace some pixelated ones and things like that. So uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to get going here. I use it for pretty simple stuff once again. So uh, yeah, I can't really explain you the ins and outs here, but yeah, it's great for making vector uh, letters. And something to replace Adobe Acrobat. Well, here it again depends heavily on how you use your uh, PDF. I super rarely edit my PDF. I might uh, once a year need some kind of a PDF editor for signing PDF, etc. Maybe once in two years. But anyway, LibreOffice, uh, let's go for food and recipes that I have open here. And then we could go to LibreOffice Draw. And as you can see, it opens my PDF document. And seems that editing text here is surprisingly easy. And so then you could just save it as a new document and off you go. So that's nice. Well, Kind of fair to say that it's not as advanced for sure as Adobe Acrobat, but that's okay. In my case, anyway. Then you could try something like Atril Document Viewer, which is installed by default, it seems, with my XFC desktop. So it's pretty kind of bare bones. You can view, view the document and uh, check some things. But uh, if you want to go even more bare bones, like just if you just need something that opens the document quite simply, then you can go with MUPDF, which is absolutely fantastic. Look how fast it opens the documents. Like it's absolutely ridiculous. Look at that. Boom, it's there. Oh my God. So if, if speed is a factor, then holy cow, you can't go wrong with MUPDF. If however, you need something more, uh, let's say advanced, you need some advanced signing options, I guess, for your PDF documents, then maybe you want to check Master PDF, which is a paid software available for Linux. So what does it say here? You can encrypt and I suppose you can put some uh, passwords here and get rid of passwords in the documents and who knows what else. But 
yeah, that is there if needed. All right, moving on to something to replace InDesign. InDesign, which you might use for creating layouts for leaflets, pamphlets, uh, some A4 document where you want some fancy graphics and things like that. Maybe you're writing a book. <laughs> Maybe uh, something like InDesign is handy for that. But on Linux, maybe you'll get by with Scribus or even more than get by. I mean, I know this is a pretty advanced application indeed. So with the right kind of experience, you could just uh, start creating newspapers, uh, daily leading newspapers for Finland, for example, and, and put the title here and look how beautiful it is. You're off to the races, I gotta say. Um, then when it comes to video editing, let's uh, check something to replace Adobe Premiere or when we, maybe you're coming from Mac and you're using Final Cut. I feel sorry for you. Um, you might want to check out something like Caden Live. This is what I use for all my simple basic editing needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know it's uh, kind of not so stable as some of the other software out there, maybe. Um, it really depends on uh, many things. If you're using a lot of, uh, you know, video tracks, it might have some trouble with those when you have 200, <laughs> you know, timelines here going on or uh, I mean, tracks at the same time. And if you have um, some effects that are prone to errors, then maybe the software will, will crash. Luckily, the the error repairing or the uh, uh, kind of the if, if the software crashes then it's kind of easy to get to the same point where you were previously never had any trouble with that really so yeah and I haven't had many crashes here so it's it's all good at the moment something you can also try is open shot I would say that it's a little bit more simplified editing tool but should get the job done haven't really used it much but then you might want to check something that uh, replaces Lightroom. So kind of a photo archiving, photo management, uh, getting small fixes done to your photographs and things like that. Then there's something like Darktable. Apparently I don't have it installed at the moment, but we can go sudo nala install Darktable or sudo apt install. And we should get going and there it finds it pretty simple pretty simple and it's already downloaded right now and we can start it up and it looks like this so you can start adding your 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 photo collections here and uh, if you are I think for most people this is a fantastic option We'll get the job done. And alternatives that you might use are Light Zone, for example, or Raw Therapy. Never used those, but they're out there. Something to replace um, Apple Photos, Windows Photos. I think there's a thing like that as well. And uh, Google Photos, uh, those kind of photo application uh, applications that are maybe a little bit more on the simple side compared to dark table or, or Lightroom. Well, Digicam or Digicam. I wouldn't say that it's a, a very bare bones or simple in a way that it's very, very, very uh, advanced, I would say, for photo management, dealing with the tags and sorting the pictures and deleting all the pictures yet that you don't need. But it looks like this. Haven't used it in a while, but I would certainly have to get on with uh, with it and kind of try to sort out my picture collections. But now is not the time because we're moving on to something to replace a software such as GarageBand. That is more like a macOS software, of course. GarageBand uh, and similar software. I would go with something like Ardor. It really has a kind of a big learning curve. But yeah, you can go new session and uh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to 
start this application right now or it's gonna probably steal the audio during this recording but yeah then there's software like Reaper I use Reaper all the time for podcast editing so it's like an audio only application you can set like a one timeline for your guitar here's bass here's your drums and here's your mama singing so yeah there is a learning curve obviously to everything uh, I, I took the kind of time to learn this uh, enough that I can get by and I would say that it's an uh, absolutely super fast application to use uh, quite like it amazing and stuff like that uh, other things that you could use are LMMS, Bitwig is very popular, I know that much, and there's Studio One, which I was shocked to find, seems like a very advanced uh, uh, GarageBand-esque application as well. If you do uh, 3D animation and the like, 3D modeling, there's a heck of a lot of uh, options that uh, you could use. Oh, I haven't installed Blender here. But you know, you could install Blender, that's probably the most well-known open source uh, 3D modeling application and it installs surprisingly quickly. And there we have it. And let's see what Blender looks like. Yep, next I suppose and blah blah blah. So yeah here you go I already forgot how to even move this damn thing here in the 3d space oh my gosh oh here we go with the mouse buttons but yeah there you can build a house and uh, that's pretty much the basic rundown of what you can do to replace your pesky Adobe software I know it's not one-on-one -on -one, and I know it might not be suitable for your use case everyone is different everyone has different needs but I heavily recommend that you take a quick long look into these applications and maybe you'll fall in love with some of them as I did